I could do it. Should I? Hey, it would probably come on. It's 100% your choice. Yeah, totally up to you. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Daniel Hanna. I'm the owner and proprietor of what is technically Toronto's last independent alternative video rental shop. Probably growing up as a TV baby. I had, I had a lot to do with shaping my societal aesthetics. And you know, I can go back to, you know, my parents would watch Saturday Night at the Movies every weekend, so that was a family thing. So movie appreciation was kind of built in from the get-go. You know, you own a DVD or you have a rental shop in your neighborhood, you have a, you have a permanent collection. Whereas with these streaming services, you're at the mercy of whether they arbitrarily decide, no, we don't want that movie on our service anymore. For me, like the greatest thing in the world was finding new shops, especially video shops. And at one point, I probably had a membership at every single video store that operated in downtown Toronto. Yeah. And I would get on my motorcycle and I would just go to you know each one. You know, there's all these movies from Hollywood that they all had the same. But there would be these idiosyncratic selections. The thrill of discovery that would come from that. I just have never found anything on the internet that sort of replaces that of everything I do. Like I don't have a smartphone. I use a landline. I'm just, what's a phone for? It's for making phone calls. It's created a certain amount of expectation from people that they can just get whatever they want, whenever they want it, at the click of a button. Could you compare, like, running this store now in this present age to, like, running the suspect video in, like, the 2000s? Well, there's a lot less customers to deal with. <laughs> and I'm laughing because that's honestly, for me, the best part of the job is dealing with customers. Just wish I had more of them to deal with at this point. But uh, there was a point when like the video store was it. You could put anything on the shelf and it would rent. You could make a lot of money, gouge the hell out of people for late fees. The video store even got a little too conceited. And you know, I remember customers complaining a little bit about, yeah, you know, you guys got a great selection, but you're all fucking dicks, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> And I, th I really took that to heart when I opened this place up, uh, geez, over 13 years ago now. So one of, you know, one of the first things I did was, yeah, I'm gonna charge late fees, but not really. Nobody wants to pay a hundred bucks for a movie they forgot to return for two weeks. Back in the heyday, I'd say on average, you know, a good independent video store was probably making about 30% of their revenue from late fees. Jesus. Yeah. And I can tell you right now, for Blockbuster, it was between 50 and 60% of the revenue. Because Blockbuster was merciless. They set up their customers to fail. And you couldn't argue your way out of late fees. You couldn't be like, well, I'll just get Netflix then. You know, it was, they were the only game in town. You were, you know, if you wanted to rent movies and continue to rent them, you had to pay your late fees. Anyway, I try to run my store a little more customer friendly. Oh, you brought it back two days late? Who cares? I still get customers to this day. They're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry this is late. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I check it in. It's like $2 late fee. It's like, I just cancel them. Like, come on. <laughs> a lot of the uh, cases that you give out have fillings with art made by people. Really curious how that started. Well, that in particular was a, a regular customer. They're actually quite prolific digital artist now, but this is going back. So I use that sketch as my profile pic on Facebook. This is pre-laser eyes. I had another customer who was gallery, art gallery promoter. I don't know, he's kind of like an Austin Powers kind of personality. You know, okay. <laughs> you know really swanky and schmoozy. And came to the shop, he's like, I'm doing a sci-fi show and I want your face that's amazing that piece i'm like wow it's actually not really my piece he's like what do you mean and i'm like well it's a sketch someone else did i drew laser eyes on it. he's like well get them to do it i'm like okay so i contacted the artist I'm like, oh, i got you a gig if you want it 
that someone came in and they're like, oh, here's these late movies. You know, I couldn't find them for a while. They're just in these black cases. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, honestly, I don't remember if I just said something on Facebook. And then one day I'll come in and take the return box and there's like 10 new pictures. Sometimes by the same person, sometimes all different ones. There's some great ones. I was going through a bunch the other day. But, I, but yeah, I, I kind of like the, there's a lot of like handmade ones. Yeah, it's really cool. What do you hope to like accomplish generally through operating community space? Well, you know, uh, I want to change the world for the better. <laughs> but what shape or form that takes, I mean. Pretty sure that I've had a positive effect on at least a dozen people.